Hello again race fans. Today's video we're going to talk about track rail height and how that affects relative downforce to a car. Not everything's created equal and although it may appear that all these rails are the same, there's a lot going on that is not apparent until you actually do a little bit of analysis. Um, we've got some samples of different track here. Up here is a piece of standard Tyco Mattel track. Here in the middle we have the Tomy AFX track. Auto World track is built very, very similar to it. We have a piece of lifelike track and we have a sample of um, Max tracks. We'll talk about that later as well as other custom tracks. The amount of metal in the rail affects the pull on the car how, relative to the standard magnet package. Different rail heights, different masses, all that affects how stuck the car is. The Tyco track each rail measures approximately 0.1 by 0.015. Uh, in a linear inch, you've got 0.0015 cubic inch. The AFX track, that rail measures 0.1 point, excuse me, 0.103 by 0.016 or 0.00165 cubic inch. The lifelike track has always had a reputation for having a heavy rail, and that's indeed the case at uh, 0 0.126 by 0 0.018 or 0 0.0023 cubic inch. Uh, so relative to the AFX, that's 30% more steel in each rail than the uh, AFX track. The other issue is rail height. This is a rail height meter produced by VRP and if you want to get one contact him and he can make you one. And it's a very simple device that has a plunger and it reads out in uh, thousandths of an inch. So the first thing we'll do we'll test some Tyco track. And where it's sitting right now, that's not even a tenth. It's point zero zero eight. This is very very shallow track. We indeed, are zeroed. So you can see that this particular piece of Tyco track has a very uh, shallow rail. Uh, therefore, in a car that has a relative tire height, um, it's going to exhibit less downforce than, say, the Tomy track. Tomy. All right, we start off at about 12, 12 thousandths and there's a high spot there of over 20 thousandths. So in the space of about six inches, we go from 12 thousandths to 20 thousandths. That's one of the problems that you have with the plastic track. It's very inconsistent on rail height. And we'll just keep running down this particular rail. And, you know, it's nominally maybe about 15, but you've got all these high and low spots that you can't control. And it's not consistent across each rail and each lane. So on this particular rail in the opposite lane, it's a little more consistent at around 14 thousandths versus this one where you go from 10 up to about 20 in that spot. Lifelike. Is fairly tall. It's well over 20, 23, 24.
20, 24, 25. So you've got a situation with LifeLight where the rails are 30% more massive than Aurora and on average, you know, another 10 thousandths higher. So if you have a standard Viper car, level 4, this car comes with uh, set up at about uh, oh, 0.434 rear tires when you put it on a piece of Tommy track and you're looking at it on the profile, there's a little bit of daylight underneath it. The car's not roll, rubbing around much. You put it on the lifelike track and you can hear it hitting the rails. So the car is what would be termed buried on this particular track. So you would have to get some larger tire in order to uh, get the car to run better and not heat up. To demonstrate that, how much more downforce you've got. We'll get our gram gauge out and we'll see how much more force that steel exerts onto the car. All right, break off at about 150 grams. Do it one more time. A little over 150, about 160, but let's just call it 150 grams. So the standard level 4 Viper car on a piece of common Tomy AFX track is about 150 grams of downforce on the rear. Go to the lifelike track, and it's 200 grams now. And that is because the magnets are now so close to the rail or even touching, plus the rail has more mass, there's more material for the magnets to attract to. So a little over 200. All right, we'll shift our attention to uh, the Bowman track. The rails on the Bowman are approximately similar to the AFX in terms of mass and height. Uh, nominally, these rails are about 14 thousandths. And when we measure it, that's indeed the case. I know you can't see it from the camera here, but uh, that's what I measure. It's very consistent. It might vary a thousandths or so up or down. but. Um, They're very consistent. And we'll measure the gram force break off. And it's actually a little less than the Tommy, which is to be expected because these rails are very consistent. It's about 140 on that first test. 140, we'll do it one more time. Let's just take the other lane. About 140. So on this particular track, in that particular spot, it's exerting a little less downforce than what the Tomy AFX track would, would give in a particular spot. However, this track is a custom track. It'll run better. Uh, the cars won't bottom out if they're set up right. Um, you don't get that on the plastic tracks. The rails vary so much that the cars hit quite a bit, so it's very problematic to get cars set up to run really, really good. Finally, we're going to look at a piece of Max Trax. Max Trax makes a fine track. And what I'm about to say doesn't reflect on the quality of their product, it's the design. Uh, all these tracks, you've got a piece of flat wire that's stuck into the track. This is staked. On the other tracks, the uh, situation is the flat rail goes in. There's a piece of wire that's put down in into the slot, a lock wire. They may glue it and then put another piece of wire on top for the color wire. Um, the Max Trax actually has the rail is shaped like a piece of angle iron. And I don't know if you can see that here or not, but they take uh, an inverted T-bit and route the slot and then they slide the rail into that. And it is actually a very small 
angle and there is quite a bit of material here. It's a little impossible for me to measure precisely how much is there, but I would say a, a good bit more than the uh, lifelike. Although the rails are very low, you have quite a bit of mass. So we'll use our Graham breakoff gauge. Wow. And it's coming up 200. So we're getting numbers very close to what the lifelike track is exhibiting. That was 160 or 70. Let's try this one over here. About 180 grams. So it actually exerts a little less force than the lifelike. So if you do have a Max Trax or you anticipate getting a Max Trax, you need to understand that it will create more downforce relative than other common tracks uh, like a Tomy, uh, custom tracks like Brad Bowman, uh, tracks from uh, Viper Scale Racing, all which uh, approximate the Tomy rail. So hopefully you've got a bit of an education. You understand graphically and pictorially what's going on with this stuff and it'll help you make better choices in the tracks that you get and how you set your cars up.